everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today we are going to be doing a boat in line and wash. Line and wash is a technique in watercolor where you have lines already put into your drawing via pencil or pen or ink from a stick. I mean, there's a lot of ways to get there, and then you wash and paint over it, creating the image. Now, on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that as I'm demonstrating this very special class, that you guys can see everything I'm doing. <clears throat> every material that I'm using, every color that I've got going on, every tool, everything. That way you can paint along at home. Now, this is part of a kit that comes with my color sheets. The Viviva color sheets are a custom set that I designed, unique to me, that is available on my website. This is the line and wash printout that you can purchase from the website. But as usual, I always have a free way to do this if you don't have any of the stuff which is just very quickly this, there is a traceable that you can download and transfer onto your own watercolor paper. I recommend using a pit artist pen with a brush tip by Faber Castell. If you're going to do that by hand yourself, I just think it's really great, but I have noticed that some Bic pens are waterproof so they can kind of work too. Um, and I have put up into the, the watercolor blog has been updated for this new kit. So it has the exchanges. That way, if I'm using peacock blue, you know that matches the phthalo blue from the pigmented watercolor paint. And it shows that on a really quick cheat sheet that you can just print out. And that way you're not trying to figure it out in your head. So, and that lets you use these in past classes with the pigmented paints and the pigmented paints in forward classes with the line and wash. That you way, know, if you don't wanna buy anything, you don't have to buy anything. But if you did, that's wonderful. But it, I just wanted to make sure everybody could participate. Even as I just sit here and listen to this, I'm amazed at how many resources you put together to make it just easy for everybody. Like, you don't even have to buy this. Just download it, and there's reference sheets, and you can just come play along with this. Don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm truly amazed all the time. <laughs> it's just everywhere. But, you know, I, we did print these out, and they are already ready for you on 140-pound paper. Yeah, no, now, you can, we absolutely have them for sale. Go yes, to our store and, and buy the stuff, it's, it's, please. It's great. We, it helps support what we do. Don't feel like you're not welcome. Don't feel like you've got to go away. You don't. We love you. We want to yeah, have absolutely. you, and there's a way for you it's, to do this with us, even off your Crayola paint. I have made that possible. You check out our New to the Watercolor Show uh, blog, and it has, like, the answers like it's pretty much every question and we just keep answering them it just gets longer and longer yeah, as we go now i have this wet mounted and taped down onto a sheet of uh, acrylic that is a quarter inch um, i'm doing this because i do acrylic on this table and that makes the seal very difficult on the paper and you want a really smooth surface i use stick low tack tape to tape it down if you don't know how to do that type of mount you can check out my blog where it's written out in a description and you can check out the how to use the watercolor sheets video that demos that and we have that timestamp so you don't have to watch the whole video you can just watch the part you need the information of back to your we do a lot of work to make sure yeah. stuff is accessible to you okay i think have i explained everything i feel like i have i think so okay i'm gonna sit my a and w rubric because it's late and i can't be stuck up with caffeine mm-hmm but hopefully I won't belt in y'all's ear. I've got a mute button. It should be fine. Okay. So yep. we're going to begin this. Let's throw up step one. Now I mounted this a while ago and the paper isn't, it's still cool to the touch. It would, a lot of people would think it's dry, but it's not actually dry. It's cool to the touch. Um, I do, however, want it to be a little wetter than this wet because I want the paint to bleed and soak in a little deeper. So I am going to get a wash brush. Now this is the... Um, 20 millimeter, it's like a one inch wash brush by um, Sa uh, Raphael Soft Aqua. It's imitation squirrel. So it paints like it's squirrel, but we murdered no squirrels. Not that any squirrels are murdered for brushes. It's just no squirrel was used in the making of this brush. It's imitation right. squirrel. It's really good imitation squirrel. So any wash brush that you have, a big quill, anything, I'm going to just go back and forth and lay down a nice wash on the paper right here. Isn't that lovely? Just lovely, just going back and forth on the paper. We're gonna do this a couple of times, so it'll be something that we've got going on a couple of times. All right, there we go. And you get that going, and I'm gonna get a round brush. Where did I stick my round? I just had it out here, and I was goofing with it. I just had it, and I don't wanna have to open up a new one, but I'm gonna open up a new one. Don't. That's right. Put your brushes just down. 
Don't do it. I've lost a whole group of palette knives recently, too. Okay, so. Fresh! Fresh out the package. <laughs> it's so fresh that the sleeve is stuck on it. All right, this is a number 14 round. I'm going to be doing this with a number 14 round. And I'm going to start by just kind of creating a little bit of watery effect below the, the boat here. So here is yellow ochre. I'm going to get my brush lightly wet. And I'm going to load some up. I can bring it over to my uh, little paint pan here to thin it out. See how I can use my little palette to create a very light load of that. And I'm going to come here and come under the boat a little bit. And it's okay it's going to go into the boat some because we actually have a little line of this that comes up into the boat. I'm going to bring some down in a vertical line. It's very soft though, guys. This, this, at this stage, we want a really soft effect. So soft. Bring it around here. And again, it's okay if it goes up into the boat a little bit because we want to make sure that we've got some of that happening. And I'm going to come from this corner of the boat down. And I'm going to use the toe of my brush and just make some little short brush strokes sort of coming back and forth in the ripples of the water. See how we're doing? Light, light paint. That's John's favorite. <laughs> when I paint something Still really, okay. really light. <laughs> John uh, does not bless me. <laughs> Actually, I, the new cameras don't don't have a problem. Okay. So it, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty okay. Yeah. And it's all right. Again, it's okay if it goes up a little bit into the boat because this is the lower part of the boat. Now I'm going to come here and get a little bit of my burnt umber. I'll go ahead and mix it into the yellow ochre to start. And come under here. And I just allow it to do what's called bleeding, which is you're working wet into wet and the color then diffuses into the wet area. The trick about wetting your paper is you want it wet enough for the water to be able to move the paint because the paint goes where the water is, but you don't want it so wet that fish can swim in it. And that's why we do wet mount our paper or dry mount where we tape this down so that it doesn't warp or weft on us too much when we're working. Just come here and add some of that. And let's, uh, let's pull a little of this dark in here. It's just a little bit of a hint of it. I'm coming in a little bit darker. The load on my brush is a little bit heavier and I'm coming in on the toe of this brush. Just moving it along the bottom of the boat. Super relaxing activity. And come here from where the front of the bow is, and I will just bring more thought, consider little line that's going down. That's a reflection. Look at that go. That's really nice, isn't it? Breathing in, because we love to paint. And you can see that the line of the bottom of the boat really guides us. The reason I like line and wash especially for new students is, and I'm going to switch pages to my Peacock, no, actually my Viridian. Come here into my Viridian. The reason I love that for you guys is then you're not so worried about the structure of the painting. You just worry about the techniques. And in watercolor, I think it's wonderful to learn how to draw, but it's more important to embrace the techniques. Let's go wash this down over here so we can start with a lighter color, and then we can always add to it in a second. See how we're doing? So that's why I like this. Now, a couple of things are moving my paint on my painting, and that's just for you to observe. Because my painting isn't flat, gravity is moving my paint. It's on a slight tilt. Slant little angle thing. And I'm going back and forth. Notice this color is coming down here at a diagonal, and I'm going very light. Because uh, the color sheets don't really lift the same way like the pigment paints like these do, I tend to come in a little lighter and just build up. 
it's so easy to build up the color. I just like to come in just a little. Oh, didn't want to get any of that. I know I'm going to come here with a much darker blue, but I think it's important to layer this here. And you can see I'm just doing little brush strokes from the middle out towards the right. Things are still damp. So I can come back in and get quite a lot more of the Viridian on here. And you can see that's much darker. Coming right here. That's much, much darker. So we can really see that coming in. Oh, it's a gorgeous blouse. Thank you, Amy. I agree. I love this blouse. Very much am fond of this blouse. I'm going to bring this here. And I don't really paint a solid bit because I want variants, especially in my water paintings, right? I do want variants in my water paintings, so it's not solid when I even put it in. Because those little bits really help kind of create that little sense of water for us. Come here down straight and just bring that back a little bit. I know I'm coming back with a darker blue. Okay. Go back to your yellow ochre. Get a fairly dark load on there. Pretty heavy in the yellow ochre now. Because I just want that to bleed a little bit in. A little heavier. See, I'm right there picking some up. And I'll pull it across and I can let it mix on to the palette. We're going to go back to the front of the book to the vivid red. Now, remember, vivid red would be the equivalent to your. Cad red, your pyro red, your warm red for this palette. It's really more of a quinacridone red, but when you're talking about exchanging in our lessons, that's what we're doing. I'm going to add some of this red into the water here because I have a bit of it in the boat. And so you would see some of that reflected in the water. Don't really need cherry blossom. I just want the vivid red. I'll just go ahead and allow that to go in or rinse out thoroughly. I might even get some happy yellow here. See where it says happy yellow? Pull some in right on the touch of my brush. Layer that in. All right, that's step one for that. That's what you're doing for that little ripply reflection. The first step is the water. Mary Myers is, I'm sorry I'm not chatting much. I'm eating ribs and my fingers are messy. <laughs> Super jealous of the ribs. Ribs and, ribs and typing, not a... Yeah, they don't really go together, so I kind of get that, that you, you decision. Can't even, that's not even a voice typing activity. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple of questions, and then I will lightly dry my paper so that I can do the next part. Of this now as you're working if your paper is even buckling even after your mount or as you as you taped it down what you'll find is if you've done a wet mount and taped it down as it dries it it stretches like it does on your watercolor block for all the reasons that I love a watercolor block I love this I really like how this one is coming out today I love that you do them the same and then every every painting because watercolor has a little bit of magic to it every time mm -hmm. it's a little different every time yeah Oh, Moderator Rainbow, I love that you're sharing the Viviva Watercolor website, but let's share the store because that's where I'm selling these kits from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. And there is a store if you want to do other kind of Aviva things. There absolutely is a store. Absolutely. Absolutely. So super helpful and I appreciate it, but just also that we have it on the Art Shipper website. If you want this specific set, because this set only exists for me. Right. We made doesn't that. doesn't exist in any of the other Viviva stuff. It won't be on there. Yeah. Excellent. 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 Okay. There. All right. 
Let's do this here. And I am going to, oh yeah, we got this door in. Yay. All right, I'm going to dry this a little bit. Did you step? Uh, no. Let's I was dry and then sure. step. Wrong mutt, you, but there we go. All right. Uh, I was just dropping the link in there. Uh, you can find there's lots of places to shop. If you go to our uh, our store, our, our website, and then click on the, the store button, it will bring you right there to it. And yeah, we got lots of things now. We have so many things and more coming very soon. But I love everything that Viva does, and I love the folks over there, and they have some cute stuff, including little cases you can get with your name etched in them. So it's good to know about it. All right, now let's go back into this, and we're going to start painting into the boat. That's why I dried it a little bit. I didn't want the paper to be moist. Watercolor goes where the water is, and so I want to make sure that there's only water where I put it when I start painting into the boat. Now I'm going to come into the boat, and I'm going to start my wonderful little bright red section with some dusk orange. I'm just loading it right on my brush. I'm going to come in here and just paint inside between these two areas where we got the red going. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And you guys are doing great. Everybody give the mods a hand because this is crazy. We haven't been in watercolor for a second. And they have a massive document that they have all links on. And it is such a big job. So you guys throw up some love to them because they come in. They're volunteering. They're in here. They're helping out any way they can. And it's like amazing what they do. And we appreciate them so much. I'm going to put a little more orange on here. So... Just and always keep that in mind. Moderators here are not like art cops, they're more like ambassadors. They're helping you find links, helping you find companies and businesses and stuff. And you know, they come in on their free time to help out. So give them lots and lots of love. And I want to send them lots and lots of love, guys, because I really do appreciate you. Come here and I'm going to kind of paint fussily around my rope because I can. Why not, right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, did I get. No, I didn't step. You didn't step. There, we're in step two. We're in it. We're see, in step we're, we're two. Step two, <laughs> step two <laughs> started at it. the beginning of the boat here. I was distracted by all the chatting and stuff, so I wanted oh, to make sure. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, I love it. Amy's like, mods are amazing. And Tanya's saying, thank you, mods. No, seriously, the mods are... This really only works because they're here and they're helping, and it is incredible what they do. I'm going to grab a little bit of our Vivid Red and kind of work that... Not necessarily perfectly. Notice that I'm just on the toe of the brush, kind of just making little brush strokes back and forth, kind of creating a little bit of a rough, uneven feeler effect. Maybe a little more red right here. I like that very much. So it's you may find that sometimes people will say when you're doing line and wash that it's like coloring. Um, one, I don't know why people give any shade of coloring. <laughs> coloring is actually pretty cool. But two, it isn't really. It's just uh, part of a process or a technique like traceables. It's just a technique. You know, so just always feel confident in what you're doing. Feel confident in what you have going on. <laughs> definitely, definitely. All right. Just going, going, going. Thank you guys so much. Now, I think in the live mod chat, guys, I put um, the name of the acrylic that I taped down to it. And if somebody could grab that and share that so people can find that again. Um, when I did my how to use the sheets, it wasn't, it didn't, hadn't come from Amazon yet, so I couldn't demo it. I had to do it on my, on the wood, which is not my favorite. I'm going to be a little darker over here. Just kind of coming in there. Don't forget when you get your color sheets that you swatch them so that you know what color is what color because when you're getting used to them until you've memorized the location of everything it can be a little overwhelming for those to feel like you know where you're going i'm going to go right into my umber 
We'll come under this lip here. And again, doing that little back and forth brush stroke. Ink you, Cad Yellow. Cad Yellow is there. Thank you, Cad Yellow. Everyone send some love to Cad Red. Um, she's feeling a little under the weather today. Oh, sorry to hear. And this is a good question. Heather C. Mods is the enamel pan on her TAS Amazon page. If it's not mods, can someone message me and I'll make sure that it's there? I think I have one, but you know, I was updating the, the watercolor doc today and I was like, what? I should have done that a little more a while ago. Look at us go here. Now remember, uh, while we're using our Posca pens and everything today, um, and I'm going to be using my white Posca and probably my Faber and Castell pit pen to get highlights and shadows and like little sketchy parts. You could also use a gel pen, a white jelly pen does this too. White fluid acrylic does this too, white acrylic and white gouache. So you're okay in whichever you're choosing to do. If you don't have any of that, then the paper is your white. And a lot of times we have to think of the paper as our white in, um, in our watercolor. Now I'm going to come down here into the main area of my boat. New step. No, new step. Same step, new step. So this will be step three. I don't have to dry because I have a barrier between my red and what I'm about to do. That's why I don't have to dry. And I'm going to come in on my peacock blue. I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit of wet first. So this will be a bit of a wet into wet, but I'm not going to go, I'm going to leave a little bit down here, about a quarter of an inch, not wet. And I'm going to do the same over here. Now it's invisible probably, this is like the Emperor's New Clothes here, but it really is. I'm leaving about this and this, you don't have to be perfect at it, I just like to leave a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and just wash out a little of the boat. And this is really about what I was saying. The water, the water color goes where the water is. So if I want the color to stay somewhere, I've got to make sure that there isn't water there. We painted this originally at the Art Sherpa Retreat with my mom, and uh, it was a ton of fun. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do, again, that sort of rough little, notice that I'm putting, like, little lines in. It was really popular, too. It was. Everybody had a really good result. and we're Because, like, whenever we do the retreat, most people come for the acrylic, and then they're like, okay, I'll do some watercolor with you, but it's, like, on a very, like, we'll see how it goes with you. Right. <laughs> Are we going to like you? I don't know. With the watercolor. And then they come out and they're like, that was just more fun than I ever expected. Yeah. Uh, Amy's sending hugs to Akkad Red. I see Sandra Kelly. These kits look amazing. I can't wait to get them. Um, so I think there's tracking when they when they get an email or something, right, John? Yeah. The tracking well, um, we Yes. Both webs all the website technology that we're using, our old stuff and our new stuff, has different levels of updating. But you will get updated. We're going to move to the Persian that I keep wanting to call Prussian, but is actually the Persian blue. I'm going to come here and just start painting this. Now, I won't. I'm going to be kind of careful. I don't have to be too careful around my rope because. You're going to paint a darker color over it? Yeah. Here I was fussy and then, and then I'm not fussy. But one thing I can do is I can wipe my brush off on a paper towel. Look at that. And I always pick a little color back off. Isn't that wild how you can do that? Just a fun thing that you can do. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of my Persian blue. This is that one that's the equivalent to the Ultramarine, right? 
and I want this side to be a little bit darker which is why I chose to do this blue. Look at that, I love that. This side has shadow. It has the shadows. It has the shadows. So I'm just letting the paint come out real dark and you can see it's a very pigmented color. I'll be bringing the the dark brown over here, you know, as we go. And I'll be darkening this side. Now I can come here on this side and I'm going to add some of this. Mm -hmm. Like let's come under here. With a little bit of that blue, that Persian blue. The need to say Prussian is just o almost overwhelming. I have to tell you, I'm just like, a fun thing that I can do is I can take my brush, see how I squeezed it. And which one are you using? This is still the number 14 no, no, the soft, color? soft aqua. Let me see it. Because uh, you got me confused now which P word it is. Persian. Persian. Like Persian the, blue. Like I want to say cat. Prussian. Like the cat. Like it's, the kitty. It's the cat color. Not, not, not the empire. <laughs> not the empire color. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. My brush isn't too wet and I can kind of smush it with my nail and it kind of flails out like that and then I can make these little hatches. There's a whole nother... Isn't that like, fun how you can do the hatching and then because it's sort of wet into wet it softens? Persia's like, what about us? We're an empire. <laughs> so that's just a fun little technique and stuff that you can kind of get there. And then I'm going to come around and I'm going to go into my uh, burnt umber. So I rinse out my brush, right? Wipe it off on my towel to make sure the pigment's out of it. I can smush it, smush it, <laughs> smushy brush. Smish it. You can also just use the um, bright if you have it. But I'm smishing my brush. It's kind of like little scratchy paints or just like distressing on the um, on the boat. Boat distress. It's distressed. It's in a boat distress. Smish, smish, smish. Smish, smish, smish. Smish, smish, smish. Smish, 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 smish. This is kind of why watercolor is a perfect, perfect art form. Because you can see I'm just like, I customize my brush. I <laughs> don't even stress on it. I'm going to just customize it. And again, I'm doing it over here, but a little bit darker. Because, you know. In shadow, a little cross hatching, and look at that go. That just goes. And what's crazy is as it dries, guys, it just gets prettier and prettier. Watercolor develops, and so one of the nice things about it is that you just I'm gonna bring a little bit across here and kind of darken. See, and then as I work the brush, it just comes back in shape. It's like it's like oh, you want a brush shape again? Okay, I can give that to you. Look at that. There we go. That's a step. How are we doing? This How are great. we doing? We don't need to dry here, huh? Uh, Moderator Rainbow has found my Amazon watercolor listing. Yeah, I put a bunch of stuff. I am probably not going to dry. Probably I'm going to go above the red line because the red line is now dry. So sometimes in watercolor, I have a weird strategy where I go around the piece and just be like, you here and hmm. you here and you here. <laughs> come back later and it's like oh that's okay I see what you're doing now I'm going to go back to my two favorite colors that I put in here which was the ink ink blue and the slate gray slate gray is such a perfect like you know Payne's gray in the old, pal old palette new palette but the ink blue man I was just in love with it and I couldn't not mm. not have it 
So I'm going to come here and believe it or not, I'm going to just take a little of the ink blue and everything in here, I'm going to start with that below that little line here. Just going to kind of pull it in. Maybe go a little bit darker down low because, you know, is in shadow. Got a little more of the lip than I wanted to get, but I can just come back with my damp brush and pull that color back so I don't worry about that. And I, it's light enough when I come back with my ochre, it'll go right over it. So I don't have to be particularly stressed. Now right here, I can come back in with my peacock blue. I'm going to put a little peacock blue over my palette. And that's just so that I can get it a light enough. See so yeah, that's very light. Get a nice light wash of it. There we go. Very light. A little darker on the other side. And I went right over my rope again. I'm so silly. It'll be all right. It actually will be. I have a cool trick with the Posca pen on it. You know, so I don't really have to worry about it. And I'm going to go back to my burnt umber. Do, 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 on the toe of the brush. A good watercolor brush is everything. You can spend more money on your watercolor brushes. They last forever and quality matters. I haven't even gotten into the... Uh, uh, Imitation Kolinsky Sable now, which is so good. There we go. I am loving it. Okay. That is going really well. Let's rinse that off and we're going to call that a step. I'm going to have a little sip. Okay. So now the trick here is if this is no longer wet, it can be cool, right? Remember when your paper's cool, it's not actually dry. It's not done developing. It's not actually done finishing. Sometimes I come back an hour later to a really uh, great piece of watercolor and it's like a different painting. It's amazing how it develops and reveals. So keep in mind, you got to give yourself some time in your watercolor to, uh, to be able to actually see it, right? Because it, it doesn't happen just like one and done. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here into my yellow ochre. And I'm going to start to put in the board. I'm coming kind of across here and I'm putting in that board. Just come down so I can see that. I'll come back over it with my Posca pen, but at least then it's right there, you know. I go ahead and get some of my burnt umber into it. Come down the front. Just all of this right now. We have areas that we're going to darken, but for right now, we're just going to take this down the front. Just the start. A 
working that there. Coming in on that inside. Isn't that lovely? This is dry enough now so I can come across here. Isn't it interesting how our strategy lets us work different parts of the piece mm -hmm. at different times? A little bit darker on that front edge there. sort of on the water here. And just a little bit of chop there. Sometimes you just need a little bit of chop. There we go. We're just working through. Now I am going to hit this with a hairdryer before okay. the next step, right? Because I want this sort of stable before I do the next techniques. You're going to love it. Yeah, it's a, you just have to give them a quick dry between the steps sometimes to get the the uh, paper to respond a little differently so that it doesn't, you know, you don't have bleeds and runs and uh, you can control the uh, watercolor or surface ink stuff that you're painting with. My reference is running away <laughs> with me, John. Hey, it's going to blow away. <laughs> Really rinse out for a second. Now one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take my burnt umber and go right over my gray here. Look at that go. Kind of layers in over the ground. That gives a nice shadow, doesn't it? I might get back into my slate gray again. A little bit there, just a little bit in shadow. We're just playing with those shadows that could be there. Just soften between that once I have that layered in well. See how I work that paint very carefully? And then just pull that up a bit. That's looking pretty nice. Yeah. New I think so. step. New step. You give us one? Okay. That's so antsy. Now, very carefully, I'm going to do some wet into wet work above the boat. I am taking my wash brush again, the soft aqua wa wash brush, which is the 20 millimeter, three quarter inch, I guess is what it is. It looks like about an inch. Anything an inch or three quarter inch will work. And I'm going to go ahead and wet this top area. I'm going to show you how to do this sort of wet into wet through segments where you don't want to over wet the whole paper, but you've got to do a lot of paper. Now, with this brush, I'm going to come into my indigo blue. And I'm going to load it on both sides. Not too heavy in the color. A 
and come back across the top. And then what I do is I kind of lift, see how I do? Keeping it soft. Now I'm gonna come down the front here, carefully around my boat. Get a little of that indigo blue again. And bring it out to the side. And can you see because the two spots are wet, it does a nice marriage. Doesn't feel like we're doing it in segments. So that's a strategy. I got to get over here before this one dries though. <laughs> and again, do the same thing. I'm going to bring it down. Get a little wet. Start coming in here and I will come in and out with my indigo on the edge, working a little bit of the darker water. It's quite light. This works because I'm going to do it quite light. Back and forth. They're not angled down, they're not angled up. Okay, while it's all still wet, flip into the Persian blue. Back and forth on the edge of the brush. Definitely want it right up to the boat. Paper's still wet, so I'm working wet into wet. can make sure that my brush is not kind of pulling apart just a little bit again working it carefully around the side of the boat can even tap and down up and down to kind of create a nice little run of water now what's important here is like this reflection, I'm going to come over and very carefully glaze over it, darkening it, not making it go away. I'm going to go back into the indigo. Before this gets wet, I gotta work it over here before it's completely dry. And I may need to reactivate, so I'm coming back through and just making sure this has got enough moisture for me to keep playing. Back into the Prussian. Persian. Mm. <laughs> it has a problem. I should see somebody. It's just a color. Well, it's just that there's a really, there's a similar blue to this. Yeah. That is that blue. Come here and I'm going to make sure I may even switch over to around, but I'll come in and just 
back and forth. Now, while it's all still wet, switching to my round. Back and forth so I can kind of piece the edge and do a little detail work here. I'm letting it be a little bit dark over here on this left hand side. They're still fairly horizontal strokes though, and I hope you're noticing that. Now one thing I can do, I can get my brush a little bit wet and I can come back to, oh gosh, my peacock blue real quick. And weave it in. There we're doing just on that outside there. It's okay that it gets light to the outside. Back into my dark blue, my Persian blue. And I'm going to add some little reflection ripples. They happen all through the water, right? I don't cross the bow that much, but I do a little bit want to do that. I do want to cross the bow a little bit. And honestly, when the time that when it's all dry, it's like a whole different thing. And you're just like, wait, where did that come from? And you'll be like completely shocked. I might come back to my Viridian Green, just real quick. Just to get some blendy blendy. Can you believe how quick that goes in? Wow, it just is super cool. So watercolor is definitely made for water. And then again, <laughs> as this dries, and I am inclined not to use the hair dryer on it because what I want it to do for it to get here to this very diffuse stage where the pigment pulls apart and everything comes apart, you've got to just let it sit and do its yep. thing. That's how it does it. It does its thing. So I'm going to sip my uh, uh, little drink here. This is your big thing. Watercolor doesn't really have an ugly stage, but it has a stage where it's developing, where it's becoming. And what I see a lot of new watercolors do, there are many things as new watercolors to do, to do better or mistakes that you make, because you know, you're learning. But one of the big things is, is working and working and working and working an area instead of just letting it resolve and come to the surface of the paper. Because with cotton paper like this, right, with, with really good rag paper that has good sizing on the surface, what happens is the pigment pulls into the paper. It also has an effect on the sizing. And the way that the pigment granulates and distributes through that creates a color shift that lightens it. So it may seem dark, but then as it dries, it gets lighter. Look how much lighter that got right here from when we initially did it. So the thing is to know, oh yeah, this is gonna get lighter. There's a color shift, it's gonna develop. The pigment may kind of separate out. And these are things to allow to happen and not overly worry about. Yeah, that makes sense. I hope it do. Yeah. I hope it do. Now, I'm gonna rinse out really well. I think I'm gonna get my, one thing you can do to keep your, um, Painting's very vibrant is to change your water often. And to have this little paper towel here, because you can see it pulls a lot of color out of my brushes. And that's also how I check if things are, you know, going crazy right now. I'm going to get back into my uh, 
burnt umber. The same step? New step. I should have said that. New step. Eighth step. Come across here. I'm going to bring a little glaze of my umber over my red. So I'm kind of creating a shadow under that lip. Maybe into this. Even more. I'm going to come back to my slate gray now. When you paint a color over a dry area like this, you're glazing it. Okay, because it's slightly transparent. Everyone thinks you make this look so easy. Well, it's fine. And things that are fun tend to, we tend to be a little more optimistic about, don't we? <laughs> I think I made you big, so I forgot we were, we were still painting. You forgot we were still painting? Yeah, because I was, you, you were talking and I was, just, I made you big. So made I made me you big. Know, I forgot. <laughs> All right, so we're going to come here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this dark color. I'm going to kind of wiggle it down the front. You'll see one in a second. It's sort of down the... See how we're doing? I'm also going to bring a little bit of a shadow about my rope to the rope while I'm thinking about it. Come on the front of this. Clay's under several of these areas. Rinse out a little bit. Come back to my yellow ochre. Go in the front there. That looks very nice. I can come back to my, I think I'll get a little peacock blue and cut a little bit of my yellow ochre on there. So it went a little green on me, but I've decided I like it. So that's okay. <laughs> Bring a little peacock blue around here, which I can do because the other area has really essentially dried enough where it's not going to bleed in. So I have that forgiveness there. I'm going to bring this over.
A nice little shadow on that front of that bow is nice to put in, you know. That is doing pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to start out with my slate gray here, slate gray here and come down. And then I'll go back over this with my white Posca pen. A little slight gray right there, a little shadow. A little shadow, I think. Darken this whole side of the boat. I think the whole side of the boat needs to be darker. I may even come and glaze this whole side with just a little of the Come on, nice along the keel. See, that's just nice. Just darkens that side of that reflection. Now, normally what I would say to you guys to do is just allow it to dry and dry and dry and dry, right, before you do any of this. But, you know, you got to go to sleep and <laughs> there's, there are these times in a lesson and, and stuff like that. I'm actually going to fix a little thing right here. Sometimes as you're working, you'll be like, oh, I want you to have a little more color right there. So you grab a little depression and come in and see how that you can do that. This is a thing you can do with watercolor where you can take an area and sort of soften it. See how we're softening these areas and make them look just a little better with just a damp brush. A lot of times people forget that they can do that um, really beautifully with with their stuff. So okay, now I'm going to dry it and I'm going to show you how to use the pens at the end to finish out this gorgeous piece. Almost there. Just a just a little bit more and we'll be there. Nice little boat. Very. I like the teals in this one. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely gorgeous. Nikki, I agree with you. Um, you know, uh, Tamu, this would probably require a little different steps for acrylic. Um, you know, you could probably follow along and be okay for the most part. You might find a few areas where you'd have to do things a little differently. Tammy has a good question. Would you follow the same steps if you were doing acrylic? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, and the reason being is that in watercolor, we paint a lightest color to our darkest color. We build up layers. We build up color. And in acrylic, we often work in our, our, our darker ranges and then add our deepest highlights and our brightest highlights. So, and watercolor just doesn't layer like that. So I probably will do this design as an acrylic design over, oh, good over the summer just because it's good for that time of year. And you'll see that go up on the schedule. I'll paint it out. And you can kind of see how would that be different? How would that be not the same? Now, I'm going to get my Posca pen. If you don't want to use a Posca pen, you could use a jelly pen. If you don't want to use a jelly pen, you could just use white acrylic. Any of it's fine. But I'm going to do some things that I really like on this. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and make some scratching. Notice that it's just very light. And this is sort of like a little crosshatch. This is just to kind of talk about the... the roughness of the paint on the on the boat. So make those little lines there. I'm very light with this. I like Posca over uh, many, many of the paint pens. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here and let's talk maybe a little bit about some rope there. Remember how I said I might come back with the rope? I'll do two lines thick on this, I think. And I'm leaving sort of the watercolor there as like a shadow. 
It'll make a little ellipse. I think that's kind of fun. That's really cool. Come at the top here. Can add some of that. Maybe a little bit of ink there. And let's highlight a little bit of that there. Some little rope is tied here. So I like to make sure I get it in there. I definitely, definitely like to add along the boat a little sort of reflection with a little bit of, of white along there. If you didn't want to use any of this, you'd have to use Frisket, which is a masking agent, quite difficult to use, and not really something you use for a single painting session. Makes it much harder to do. Now I'm also going to come here and doing some horizontal little water lines. And those tend to be a little bit fun, don't they? And I might even talk about that rope that way with that reflection. So I've got that shadow and that reflection that gives me that. We'll put this to the side. Remember I said what pen do you use? Use a pit pen. This is a brush nib. That's what I like. This is a Faber and Castell pit artist pen. Will we have it in store? Yes, we will. I got confirmation of that. <laughs> Probably if they let us, I'll carry anything that Faber and Castell makes because all their product is just really quite good. Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on just to make sure that I'm seeing everything well, right? We don't want to trust our vision such as it is. Kind of come on the front here. And then I'm going to just do a little hatch down the front. That kind of just talks a little bit about the shadow on the boat, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <coughs> I'm going to come under this lip and maybe around here. I like to just, you know, think about those little things that make that little rope there little rope there. The ropes are fun to play with. The little knot of rope coming off the boat is a lot of fun. And I very much like to come in and kind of reinforce the lining that I had in the line and wash here, just to bring it back. Bring a little shadow there. And then come here, across there. I like to go wiggle, 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 wiggle. Right. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's those kinds of things sometimes just make a huge impact. Going to definitely strengthen that line of the boat there. Kind of create a little shadow line above the water line. I don't really want to do anything there. Come under my rope. Very light pressure. I break a line. So if I need to have a fine line, I'd rather the line not be solid than press too hard and over thicken the line. Little angled hashes down. You know, I 
can come back and be like, you know, is there any place I want to put my white back? I might come in here and... And so you guys know I have three millimeter and one millimeter in my Posca pens. And they are more indestructible than you'd think. Oh, it's just too fun. And I hate to even have to be done with it, but we are. I hate to be done, but we are. Just went so So that's quick. fun. You didn't sign it, though. I didn't. Though I want to talk to you again. F Faber and Castell Pit Artist Pen and the Posca pens. Poscas can be uh, expensive. So a jelly pen in white, fluid white, acrylic paint. You can do all these techniques with paint. Um... Uh, you can probably get away with like a white pastel pen or a white pencil if it's highly pigmented. You just want something that can make an opaque mark over this stuff to get these effects. There's a lot of ways to get there. I've done a Bic pen to do black lining to come back in my black lining and, you know, create some depth and everything. So just know that there's more than one way to get there. And if you have budget stuff, don't let the budget make you feel like you can't do a thing. There's always a way in every budget to do a technique. Um, I just, I like these two and I do recommend, these do last a long time. I use these in a uh, 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 class with 150 people <laughs> and one set of these pens did rock painting with 150 people. And they were intact. And these were all new artists that didn't know like how to take care of pens. Yeah. I've given these to my kids and they last forever. These are pretty amazing. These I don't give to my kids because they don't want to... These be gentle with these. Just because the nibs are quite fine. Though my kids have um, often stolen them and um, now are completely addicted to them and that's all they request. Right. Are the pit yeah, pens. That's because they, they, they like are. them. They want them. They want them. They're like, can I have your pit pens, mom? I'm like, not my pit pens. I'll buy you your own pit pens. <laughs> don't touch my pit pens. So they're really good pens. Um, we don't have the store open yet, and I am not getting a commission it's, it's, in on that. The full so. store is not open yet. Our minor, our little store is our open. little store. The water, like the watercolors, in there. And is, and and our and our events tickets are in there. Our event tickets are there, but like the the art supply store is op will be opening up over stages in the beginning of February. Yes. So oh, actually. Maybe even next week we may be testing. We may, start, we may be like testing if you're a patron. Work. Watch out. Yeah, patrons, we may be look testing out. Our there could be. On you. We could be like, hey, <laughs> can you guys? So these buy brushes stuff? that you see me using, this stuff will be available there, and you'll be able to find those materials. By the way, I'm gonna tell you right now. Know this in your head, going forward, forever as my viewer. I'm gonna have a store, and I'm gonna try to get you the best price I can possibly get you on art supplies. I don't mind though that you, as a consumer, go cross shopping and price shopping uh -huh. and. If you find a better price elsewhere, I'm never going to be mad at you. Yeah, and if you tell us, we'll do our best to match yeah, it. Yeah, tell us. Like, sometimes people can get a better deal. Like, they can buy a greater amount or yeah. something like that. But we will do our best and just know that I will have it. But you are not here, like, to shop at my store. It's just a convenience thing that I have, and I will never be upset if you go elsewhere. Totally, yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Okay, so we have some more of these coming up. We have the first four. Do we have more line and washes after this? Yes. So we will always sell the line and wash sets as a separate kit. So you don't have to buy the paint every yep. time. Um, and you will always be able to download them. So you don't have to buy the line and wash kits if you want to print out your own. Um, just, just know that. And I've got probably, I don't know, 20 already made <laughs> that I've designed out. I'm just trying not to overwhelm us with them and I'm, I'm pacing them out, which is really hard for me to do. There's like, gosh, there's a couple kissing under an Eiffel Tower and there's wine glasses and there's Tyrannus, there's a Triceratops for kids and a wax waddle and I've got complicated ones and easy ones. Um, coming up in this set, I've got the mermaid. Oh, if you guys want to see it before a uh, skadoot, skadoodle. Let me reach in here. I'll see if I can find them. I've got the Swimming Day Father and Son coming up in this set. I've got the Sea Turtle coming up in this set. And I have Cup of Sea coming up in this set. And you can, like, this is what you get from us when you get the, the line kits, the 140-pound paper. Um, 
so that you can do these yourself, but you can print them out on your own. And you can do them a lot of different ways, like I painted the turtle a couple different ways. So there's a lot of different different ways that you can do a thing. Um, don't feel like you're stuck anywhere on anything that you have to do. And again, you can do these with regular watercolors and you can just use them as a traceable or you can freehand them out. It's all fine. It's all fine. Whatever you want to do is fine. It'll always be fine with me. If you have questions, you can share your watercolors in the group. You can ask questions. Please leave comment questions in the comments after the show. I come and check my channels all the time to see what questions are. You can write into the website, um, you know, and ask us a question. So I'm everywhere uh, trying to answer questions. The moderators are here. They're trying to help me answer questions. So we are literally here to help all the time don't ever feel bad about asking if i don't have an answer i'll find you somebody who does <laughs> so that's where my heart's at you guys um tonya says uh this has meant the world to me life's been hard the past few days thank you sherpa john mods and chatty art friends and then the bug is like triceratops oh and a bee there's a bee in forced perspective bug i did bugs for you and tonya i'm glad this has helped it it helps me too. I, I did a bunch of marathon watercoloring when I finally broke my artist block and I was like, I'm painting again. <laughs> it felt so good. So expect more. I will try not to overwhelm you with watercolor, but I should warn you that Saint LA sent me a bunch of metallic watercolor and black paper pads. So I can't promise that I won't throw more classes at you. I might, but I'll try not to overwhelm you with too much stuff to do. <laughs> Guys, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at your watercolor pad or easel really soon. And if you're doing acrylic tomorrow, Saturday, we have the hydrangeas by the ocean over on the acrylic channel. Okay, love you guys. Bye-bye.